I'm back. <laughs> Did you guys miss me? <laughs> so I love your hat. That's great. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you always have to acknowledge the other hat wearers in the room. So in this case, I'm not doing like a community talk. I'm doing a, I'm an employee talk. So I got like company branding and I have no idea what I'm talking about, which is why I wrote this presentation so that I would know what I'm talking about. Um, so GeoCat, it's a spatial data, uh, does spatial data publication and discovery. They really are passionate about the open source thing. They've been doing open source for, I don't know, a long time. They were on the scene before I was, so 2002, 2003. Um, and they're based in Benacom. They've got developers in the Netherlands, Spain, and Canada. This is Benacom. I'm sure it's really raining there right now. Um, for anyone who was in the previous talk, this looks familiar. I'm Jody Garnett. Uh, I work on a number of different open source projects. I've been doing open source geospatial since 2003. Um, and I've really been happy to spend the vast majority of my career as a professional open source developer. Uh, in order to give back, I contribute to a number of software communities. So I've just come off a, uh, two tours of being a director for the Open Source Geospatial <coughs> Foundation. Um, I volunteer with the Incubation Committee to help developers and the Marketing Committee to help people find the developers. Um, and I also do a similar role in the Eclipse Foundation, uh, working uh, to help onboard new projects there. But nowhere on that previous slide did it say GeoNetwork. And that's a trouble because GeoCat's main bread and butter, their expertise, is in GeoNetwork. So this is the presentation I wanted to read uh, when I joined the company. How do I make it go? What does it actually do? Who's it for? Uh, and what on earth are they using it for? Um, and then as an open source person, who makes this thing? What's the community like? You know, who's paying for it? What kind of maturity are we looking at in the code base? What makes it go? Like, is it any good? And, you know, what's its superpower? Or can I rewrite it in Python in an afternoon? Like, I just, you know, those kind of questions. So first impression, it's got OSGO in the corner. So that's good. Vendor neutral um, foundation. Here's something that weirds me out. It says open source in the title. That's usually a sign that something's really old and open source is a feature. Or it's a sign that it's like really commercial and this is the open source teaser uh, and they're gonna try and withhold functionality for you later. So I'm like, ah, open source of the title, something's wrong here, whoop, whoop. And then the other thing, I like looked at their logo and I'm like, what's going on with the logo? It like, so it's wrapping the globe it's got a little metadata monk dude contemplating the magic of data or something. And then this top part is a G, but you have to like look at it sideways. So I really expect everyone to turn their head sideways. It'll be an awkward bonding moment. Hmm. Yeah. So I wasn't able to get them to have a normal logo. They love this thing. Okay. Installation and setup. Um, the quick Quick start, kind of assumed we had a geo network already. <laughs> okay. Um, before we start, we, it's a Java web app. It uses Java 8. Um, use one from your Linux distribution or adopt JDK. There's a couple installations, an installer, WAR, source code, and Docker. But there's no guide on how to use that. So as I made the presentation, I documented it. So I, I owe the community a pull request after this. There's an amazing installer that uh, is written in Java or something. Uh, it eventually works. Yay. Uh, bring your own um, Tomcat, your own application server, and drop a WAR in. Another popular choice. Source code is an official distribution. I always love that. They're living up to open source in their title. Um, and they do have an official Docker image. <coughs> So in terms of setup, starting with one of these local host things, we're presented with a nice blank screen. Um, we sign in using admin and admin. Uh, and then we can start to get into this administration console. Um, 
you know, I went through and I changed the title and the description so this would be my catalog. And they've got a little example here where we can load in some sample data. Um, and that's enough for me to actually begin trying it out. So the next part of the website talks about finding and getting information. Um, and then this was a surprise to me. There's a map portal in it. Uh, I, in all my years being near it in the community, I didn't realize it actually had a map portal. Is there anyone here, OGC, happy? Like, do they really love their standards? No one is willing to admit that. One person. Oh. Uh, have you heard of open web context? Wow. I was sure even a standards person wouldn't have heard of that, but we're not worthy. Uh, so these people, uh, the, the Geo Network folks, actually uh, use OWS contacts and standards for their maps. So if you build a map here, you can go and import it into a desktop client, something else that supports OWS context. I'm not sure what that is. Um, but still, we can now start to search. There's some kind of tag system called facets, which we can use to quickly filter out the records. And we can do a text search. All good. When we start to look at an individual record, it's actually really detailed. Like this looks a lot more like a professional catalog system, um, you know, like in a library or something. Um, except that it's got a whole bunch of interesting things like maps and stuff lurking in the corners. Um, <laughs> The records contain a lot of detail on the extent, the source of data, the pedigree of it, um, and hopefully a download link or a link to an actual web service where you can grab the content. And then finally, there's an add to map button right on the records. So we can hit add to a map and see the data in a little browser here. And uh, as we're going through and do that, we can mix and match content we find and eventually like download it when we're done. So that was kind of fun. So out of the box for visitors, Geo Network is providing a really nice professional catalog. Um, people use it to manage, you know, hundreds of thousands of records and visitors search and browse for content. Um, some of the content is stored directly in the catalog, like you can store, I don't know, images and PDF reports and stuff. And then some of it is cataloging external web services or external data sets that's out there. And then Geo Network can also just be used as a map portal there to actually visualize the content. Okay, breather here. I don't, I, this, this talk's not as long, which is good because I have less time. Any questions about this core capability? No, we're good? Okay. Now we're going to pretend we're a data custodian and we've got lots of information we're responsible for. Is there anyone like that in the room? A couple people. How many data sets do you manage? 12, 1200? We dominate them personally in a particular area, but as, as the UK Cape Surveying Group, there's about 20 data sets okay. around the world. Gotcha. Okay. So the next part here is about editing and publishing your own records and it also supports a whole whack of standards and it can manage both your data and your documents. One thing that's nice about this is that it does follow the OGC standards. You can have catalogs that harvest from other catalogs and bring up all this information and really help with discovery. Um, it's also relatively flexible for configuration, security, configuration, got the idea of harvesting from other catalogs, and they also have a lot of analysis available on what data sets and records are actually being used, which is very helpful. Um, so why would you use one of these things? It helps your team find out what information's available in your organization. Do you have like directories of shapefiles of dubious lineage? Um, how many duplicate data sets do you have and so on? Or perhaps you've got a government um, obligation to share with the public. Uh, in Europe, the Inspire program is really popular for giving people work to do, um, for example. Um, it also helps your team know where your map came from. Uh, so what information is used behind the map? Did you, what information have you purchased and maintained? It's always embarrassing when two people buy the same set of data. Um, 
Also, what information are you responsible for publishing to other parties? Okay. So I can go through the steps here of pulling in some templates, creating a new record. In this case, I have to choose the exact like, like record structure. Um, so ISO 191939. Uh, and then I can fill in the details. And this editor is a thing of beauty. Um, is you can do all the things. These standards are, are very crazy, are very detailed, uh, very detailed oriented. And this editor goes toe to toe with how complicated these standards are, which is really impressive. Um, and harvesting, I just harvest from a local geo server and I was able to pull in some records and review the records and, and so on. So harvesting worked for me. So technical approach, how does it work? Developer friendly, it's got a whole bunch of ability to customize it, and it really believes in open standards, open source, and opening all the things. Here's my picture of it. I'm not sure anyone else has drawn a picture like this. So, the UI right now for, for Geo Network 3 is based on Angular and Bootstrap, and a bit of open layers for the mapping. Um, it's a Java application, so it's got uh, and this picture I'm using Jetty. Um, the technologies are, it's a spring-based uh, application. It's using Lucene for the text search. If you're searching lots of like WFS feature content, uh, fe record by record, and also use Elasticsearch. A um, couple interesting things here is it does support the CSW protocol. Um, which allows it to interact with other catalogs. And it does have a REST API. And I see people using the REST API about 50-50% versus the OGC standard. Um, and what else do we got? A whole bunch of, it manages its own users and groups internally, but it does interact with other authentication systems. And a new feature is it does have a publication workflow. So a record can be completed and then given to someone else for review and approval. Um, okay, yeah, lots of other things. It does make use of a database to store its configuration. This is terrifying to me. Um, I like little text files. It's, it, as part of each upgrade, there's a little SQL script to like update your configuration table in the database. I'm really gonna be terrified of like changing those things. Um, out of the box, it works with H2, but one of the first things people do is switch it over to PostGIS or a, another database when they go in production. And they're also starting to make use of Elasticsearch. Right now it's optional, but I think for GeoNetwork 4, it's gonna be a bit more mandatory. There is, does a, is a file system there um, to handle attachments and thumbnails and a spatial index and so on. So it is a well-structured application it's got really clear boundaries between the server and the front end, and you see organizations making use of this division. So when we go and look at geo network deployments, people have completely destroyed and made their own front end from scratch, or they've made very extensive modifications. Um, can also see some real uh, evidence of maturity. So organizations that are investing in the code base and doing kind of major architectural changes um, and also, you can swap out the database, you can swap out the data directory for S3. So some folks have put some thought into this. Really loves its XML technologies. So I expected validation, that's fine. They also use Schematron to put some rules uh, uh, in play. And then they've got a plugin for each standard. And the plugin is stored in a separate repository to be kind of technology neutral. One thing that is, was impressive as I went into this, they actually use XSLT to generate that editor on the fly from the schema document. So that's one reason why people are able to adapt this for their own national standard. So typically I see this being used to generate HTML or PDFs, but dynamically making an editor on the fly is a new one for me. Um, to wrap up, who makes it? Strong community um, of companies and individuals. Um, OSGeo is the custodian, so it's in a nice vendor-neutral um, 
place. It's also really nice to see professional support uh, being offered and then actually seeing acknowledgements of Camp to Camp, Geocat, and I can't pronounce it. Okay, I need to wrap up. Okay, here's an example of one where people have made a new user interface. They actually added a shopping cart model. So go through and do a shopping cart. Um, and here's a national registry. Here's the original United Nations one. This was the original, and so the open source in the name was a feature. This was the United Nations making their internal project an open source um, uh, project. So I really hope it pays off for them because all these years later, there's companies, the product's been maintained, and so on. So thank you.